Well, good morning, everyone. It is good to see everybody here on this January morning, January 7th of 2018. How many of you are still writing 2017 on your checks and everything else? Yep, yep. Um, ditto to you. I got you. I feel it. I, I'll get it about June. I'll start writing 2018. I'm probably saying it. So, um, hey, my name's Justin Graves. We are so glad to have you today. If this is your first time, thank you for taking time out to be here with us. Um, we are glad that you are here. First service, I have some great news for you today um, that is going to be for all people throughout the rest of the year. Um, but uh, for first service only, for first service only, we are needing room in our second service. So we are bringing back the donuts for first service only. But it gets better. It gets better all year long. Um, so, so yeah. So we're trying to make you guys fat for our New Year's resolution. You're welcome. We're trying to totally destroy getting better shape for you guys. Um, but that is going to be happening here on Sunday mornings. So drag your friends. Um, you may have to bribe them with the donut, but we'll have great daylight donuts here. Um, they won't be day old. They'll be fresh. But that is starting next week. So be here. Be at this service um, and invite people to come with you because the reality is people will come with you if you just simply invite them. Um, before we get started this morning, I need to make an announcement. Um, many of you know that Keaton Turnbow passed away this past week, um, and Justin and Andrea are with us this morning. And uh, his funeral service will be at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning at the church at Battle Creek. It used to be the church at Battle Creek. Now they just call it the church. But um, that is going to be happening 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning at the church at Battle Creek. And I know Justin and Andrea would both love to have all of you be there in attendance. If you can make it, they know, they understand that it's, it's work week and Things are crazy, but if you can make it, I know that it would be an awesome, awesome thing for our church family to show up and just support them in this hard time. Also, just so that you know, the dress for that funeral is casual, so something like this, I'll, I'll be speaking in something like this, just so you know kind of, well, what do I wear? Um, they just want everybody to come as they are, because um, that's the way Keaton would have wanted it. And so, man, let's show up and honor a young man that is deserving to be honored, be, well, that lived a life very, very well. Um, and so if you can make it, that would be fantastic. Uh, for all the men out there, men, we have a Bible study starting this Tuesday for four weeks. Um, it's going to be happening at 630. It's called The Rock, a four-week study on the life of Peter. And um, it's going to be an incredible, incredible time. Many of us, we, just, we are wanting to get better, and you can't get better on your own. We say it all the time, we're better together. So let's get together, men, um, and let's get better. Let's be better at leading ourselves so that we are equipped to lead our homes and lead others. And so if you want to be there, man, be there. It's four weeks. You can do anything once a week for four weeks. Okay, guys, um, it's not hard. Get there. We'll be meeting in the FC Kids Room and then breaking out from there. 6.30 this Tuesday. It's going to be great. Um, it's not going to be cheesy. Um, I hate men's studies that are cheesy and you're like, wah, wah. Um, so men, show up. It's going to be a great time to get to know other guys um, and also just to get better um, to be a better you. This morning we start a series called Blind Spots, and we're going to be going through this series for four weeks. Um, and I'm really, really excited about this series um, because when I say blind spots, everybody for the most part knows what I'm talking about. Um, we have blind spots when we are driving in our cars, in our vehicles, and <clears throat> This became painfully aware to me um, at one of my occasions where I was driving back home. Now, now, in the, I'm not going to be able to sit down. I don't know why I even tried the stool. Um, I just need it for one moment, and it's coming up. But um, while, while we were, while, there is a, a, a very important drive in my life um, from a location to my home that I am like, it's got to be quick. There's a reason that there's a timing for it. And it is any time that I go to pick up pizza from Hideaway um, and bring it back to my house, there is a certain amount of time that pizza can sit in that box before it becomes soggy, before it becomes too cold, and I don't want to get home too quick or it will get too hot. How many of you in your lifetime have bitten into pizza and it's burned all the skin off the roof of your mouth, the toppings fall off, you cry, you throw your pizza, it's a whole ordeal, um, and you never get a second date. Um, that's why you don't go for pizza on the first date. You wait till like 
the fifth date, and then she can realize what a freak you are. Um, but we, uh, there, there's a timing to it. And so I picked up the pizza. I've got it in my truck, and I'm like, okay, it's go time. We've got to get home. I don't want it to be too cold. I don't want it to be too hot. And I'm, dri- I'm driving. I've, I'm a man on a mission to get pizza at my house, and we do it from hideaway this time. Um, I don't know if you've ever had the thin crust from hideaway, but it's a game changer. Um, Steve Beck, one of my friends in Oklahoma City, introduced me to, to thin crust hideaway pizza. Glory to God. Um, see, iron sharpens iron. And um, as I was there, I'm, I'm driving my truck, right? Which it's not like a monster truck, but it's a truck. And I've, I've got my truck and I'm in a hurry and I change lanes to turn right. And in the process, I looked in my side view mirror, but I didn't do the whole you know, check your blind spot because that's a pain. And I, I was in a hurry. I'm busy. I'm like, I don't see anybody there. And I crunch into a hamster car. And what I mean by a hamster car, do you know what a smart car is? I don't know if any of you have seen a smart car. It looks like a Hot Wheels, um, but a very uncool Hot Wheels. If you drive a smart car, and this is your first time here, and you're offended about this statement right now, just hang on, because I'm probably going to offend you a lot more than this. Um, (laughs) So I'm just telling you, that's the truth. That may be the most true statement I say um, for 2018. But I, I hit this hamster car, and this hamster woman gets out, and she starts squeaking at me like, wah, wah, wah. I'm like, I can't, I don't talk hamster. Um, here's, you know, here's some carrots and some lettuce, and it'll be okay. And um, I apologize. It's like, man, I, I did not see you running on your little wheel, and I am so sorry. And, and she, was, she was good, and she was fine, and like people are driving by, yelling and honking at her, and she's giving them the bird, and I'm like, okay, this is a good moment. Um, I'm the pastor of Foundation Church, why don't you come check us out? Um, here's the deal, it was completely, completely my fault. Um, it was my fault for hitting the, uh, the, the vehicle, the whatever you want to call that thing. Um, it, it was my fault. And the reason it was my fault is because I didn't take the time to check my blind spot. And when we get in a hurry, just like I was, and we don't check it, that's when the crunch occurs. That's when the damage occurs, right? Is because we don't go to the pain. We don't take the time to look in our blind spot. And this morning, I, I want us to understand the first thing is this, is that damage happens when blind spots are ignored. Damage happens in our life. I'm not just talking about driving. Yes, while driving, absolutely. But damage happens in our life when blind spots are ignored. And, and I got to tell you, probably the number one reason we ignore our blind spots is because we don't want to take the time. We're just too busy. We're just going. And, and, and we don't want to go to the pain like me of, of looking behind and I got it. I, I know, I, I, but, but we just get in a hurry just like me and we say, well, well there's, nothing's going to happen. This isn't going to lead to anything. There's nothing bad that's going to happen. It's not a big deal. And we start minimizing our blind spot instead of taking the time to inspect our blind spot. And when you and I, we get too busy and we start minimizing, that's the moment when damage happens. That's the moment when hurt, when pain occurs in our life and it leads us into a place when you and I don't inspect our blind spots, when we don't check our blind spots, when we let blind spots, uh, when we ignore the blind spots of life, it leads us to a place where we say phrases like, how did I end up here? I, I, I didn't see this coming. I, I thought I could handle it. I don't know how this happened. And all those phrases occur, all those things happen when you and I ignore the blind spots of our life. And this goal of this whole sermon series is this, is that we could eliminate those phrases from your life. How, how did my life end up here? I, I didn't see this coming. I didn't see this happening. I thought I could handle I didn't think it was that big of a deal that we could eliminate that phrase from our life in 2018. In Proverbs chapter 8, 
verse 32 through 36, this is going to be the main text of this whole series. And I got to give you some homework today before we get any further in, in the message. And it's simply this. I want everyone here to read through the book of Proverbs. Um, it is an incredible, incredible book. I would really encourage you to read out of the New Living Translation. I love the way it reads. The New Living Translations, the NLT, that's what you hear me preach out of most of the time. But man, my Bible, this is the 10th year since we started this church. Every January I read through Proverbs, and my Bible looks like a, a coloring book. Um, it is written up, it's circled, it's underlined. I'm still missing stuff. I'm like, how did I miss that there? Um, and so I would really challenge you no matter what age, no matter what phase in life you are, start in Proverbs and just get into the Word and start reading. But Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32 through 36 says this, and so my children, listen to me, for all who follow my ways are joyful. I want us to stop for just a second and let us understand who's talking right now. Who's talking right now is wisdom. It's like wisdom is a person right now. And wisdom is calling out to us and saying, this is wisdom speaking. And so my children, listen to me, for all who follow my ways are joyful. Listen to my instructions and be wise. And there's this, this phrase at the very end of it, don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Can I tell you, the problem isn't that wisdom isn't speaking to us. The problem is that we aren't listening to wisdom. It's that we almost, perp like when you read through Proverbs, can I, for the most part, most of us know the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. It's just we choose to ignore what wisdom is saying to our lives. You have to almost purposefully ignore what wisdom is screaming out to you. And, and wisdom would say to you, the Bible would say, Solomon, the, the author, the wisest person that ever lived, said, man, man, don't ignore it. Verse 34, joyful are those who listen to me, watching for me daily at my gates. It's not a one-time occurrence. It's, you don't just become wise in one span. I, I don't know anybody but Solomon that was granted wisdom by God like, bam, you're wise now. Um, it, it is a daily occurrence. Joyful are those who listen to me, watching for me daily at my gates, waiting for me outside my home. And listen to 35 and 36, for whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. I want that to be my 2018. Whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord, but those who miss me injure themselves. Those who miss me, those who, who refuse to listen, those who ignore what I'm trying to speak to their lives. Those, let me, let me flesh this out a little bit. Those who are just are, are too lazy to read the book, the Bible. Those who just won't be still long enough to listen to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Those who refuse to receive correction. Those who refuse to listen to godly counsel. Those who miss me. It doesn't injure my pride. It doesn't put me out as your pastor. It doesn't hurt your parents. It doesn't it doesn't hurt your peers. It doesn't hurt your mentors. If you don't listen, hear me. It's what it's saying. But those who miss me, miss wisdom, injure, harm themselves. You see, when we ignore the blind spots in life, damage occurs. So what is, let, let's, what is officially a blind spot. What's the definition of a blind spot? Well, the first definition is this, an area around a car that the driver cannot see. That's the first definition. Most of us know that one. But according to Webster, there's another definition, and I love this one, an area in which one fails to exercise judgment or discrimination. An area in which one fails to exercise, and I would insert good, <laughs> Wise, right? Oh, I exercise judgment, you know. Nah, nah. No, no, no. What, where we fail to exercise good, wise judgment or discrimination. And, and 
I think for a lot of us, the reason we don't exercise dis the discrimination or judgment, the reason we don't really look at our blind spots and that we miss wisdom is because we refuse to identify it. We refuse to really, man, what, what, what are the blind spots, the areas in my life that I am susceptible to that, that are a struggle, that are, as Paul said, a thorn in the flesh, because I have news for you. All of us, everyone in here, no matter how godly you become, have a blind spot. No matter what age you get to, you will struggle with the blind spot. There will be an area of life that if you're not careful can creep up into and you will be tempted to compromise in. You will, you will fail in. You'll just kind of submit to. And that's not what God has called you to. Whether, did, whether you're a teenager, a college student, a young professional, a young married, married, an old person. Let's just call it out the way it is. A senior citizen. Um, if that's you, and I'm fastly approaching that, um, becoming that old person, somebody's like, how old do you turn this year? You turn 42. And I was like, no, what? what? 42? I thought I was turning 41. I'm forgetting what age I'm turning. It is, is we've got to, because what we refuse to identify, we won't and we can't address. What you don't identify as a blind spot, you won't address as a blind spot. You, you can't address it because first you're not identifying it. So what are some areas that become blind spots for our life? Well, the obvious one to me is the opposite sex, duh. Um, but for some of us, it's finances. For some of us, it, it's doing with our finances what we want to do with it instead of what God has instructed us to do with it. Some of us, we struggle with greed. And, and your area of your blind spot, which Jesus talked a lot about finances in the Bible, is your blind spot's money. For some of us, it's relationships. Others of us, it's, it's our kids. Our kids can't do anything wrong. You've seen the parents? Trust me. Trust. I am the parent that I know my kid can do wrong, and I will pounce. Right? I'm like, don't, don't do it. Um, I get the big eyes and everything. Um, <clears throat> but, but some of us, we, well, oh, my kid's never do what? My, my kid said a bad word? What? My kid acts different outside of my presence than he does in my presence. Why? And you've called teachers liars. You've called youth pastors. Nobody gets my kid. No, 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 no. Maybe you don't get your kid. Maybe you need to turn around and inspect a blind spot in your life. For some of us, it's our emotions. And we're going to talk about that. It's going to have a whole sermon just on emotions. Some of us, it is, we're the exception to the rule. So blind spots, well, I'm, I can handle blind spots. We, we become the exception to all the rules. Some of us, it's anger, and some of us, it's selfishness. What, what's your blind spot? What do you need to identify in your life? Because when you identify it, then you can address it. Then you can deal with it. Because what, whatever your blind spot is, when we ignore it, damage occurs. Man, if you miss wisdom, if you keep having blind spots, you're only injuring yourself. I will tell you what my blind spot is this morning. You're like, well, it's getting personal. But what my blind spot is, I am the guy that gets caught up in the moment. I am the guy that makes the rash decision based on the emotion of the moment. So when I speak on emotions, guess who I'm preaching to? Numero uno. Um, I get, I'm the guy that the infomercial on TV works on. Like, you're like, does that really work? What guy would buy... I'm that guy, like the paint can that fixes everything, that like he breaks a boat in half and like he sprays it and it's floating around on the lake. That's me. I want to see if that works. I'm like, yes, let's buy that paint can and let's tear a boat in half and let's spray paint it and let's get a motor and let's see if this works. I just, I'm that guy. 
And so here's what, I'm that guy in making decisions and choices. I'm an emotional buyer. I have realized that. I understand that. And so what has to happen now is Casey has to talk me down off the ledge. But Casey, you don't understand how awesome they promised this is all going to be. And we can make it work. We can make it work. We, can I give you some advice? This is not a financial series. But if you got to make it work, it don't work. Like, stop trying to make it work. And, and so, I've got several people <laughs> around me, even when it comes to the church, I get caught up in the excitement of the growth and everything, that, that have to, okay, Justin, love the excitement, love the passion, love the dreaming, but let's back up a little bit. And let's make a decision and a choice based on thought, based on wisdom, based on facts. You don't have a boat. You don't have a lake. You don't have a motor. So don't buy the paint can, right? (laughs) Let's, (laughs) this isn't even in my notes. Um, This, that's my blind spot. And it sounds Oh, well, it's, it's just a paint can, but it can lead to a lot of harm and a lot of damage and a lot of regret because I got caught up in the moment. See, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss wisdom because I've understood this much is that the person that hurts is me and the people that are connected to me. And so realize, if you think this sermon is just about you, that you're just injuring yourself. No, 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 it's way bigger than that. It affects everyone attached, everyone connected to you. Damage occurs when blind spots are ignored. When you miss wisdom, you injure yourself. So wouldn't it be great, wouldn't it be nice if there were blind spot detectors. Um, We bought Casey a new vehicle after 10 years of driving the same car. We finally bought her one when I drove her car and I realized the steering wheel was like this and I was like, you need a new car, girl. This isn't safe. She's like, I've been telling you that for years. Um, See, once again, she got me in the emotion of the moment. We're buying a new car. Um, (laughs) Telling you. And and on her new vehicle, she has on the side view mirrors blind spot detectors so that when anything gets into her blind spot that she can't see, she doesn't have to do that. It just flashes. She's like, hey, there's danger, there's danger, there's danger. Don't get in another lane. Don't move. Just keep going straight or slow down. Wouldn't it be great (laughs) if life worked that way? And and I got to tell you, as followers of Christ, You and I, God has given us a built-in blind spot detector to help us in in, in leading and into living our life. And it's called wisdom. It's called wisdom. And wisdom doesn't get talked about near enough. Knowledge is different than wisdom, and we'll get to that. But, But wisdom is something that happens when you spend time with the Lord. I've seen a lot of knowledgeable people, but being knowledgeable isn't the same thing as being wise, because I've never seen a wise person who's not a godly person. I've never seen a wise person who's not a godly man or a godly woman, because wisdom comes from the Lord. And so the second thing I want us to understand today is wisdom makes sure your blind spots don't become a source of pain and regret. Wisdom is your blind spot detector. Wisdom is what makes sure your blind spots don't become the spot where pain and hurt and remorse for your life and those connected to your life and regret kicks in. There's a quote that I disagree with, so don't amen this thought because the moment I say a quote, people are like, ooh, that's good. So I don't want you to be that person. Um, this, I, I read this as like, I'm not that person that's like, I don't agree with that. Um, but this one I was like, I don't agree with that. Um, it's by Anthony Douglas Williams, and it says, knowledge comes from learning and wisdom comes from living. Now, I need some water for this. I got to tell you, 
I have seen a lot of people that are up in their years that this statement is not true. Wisdom did not come from living. It, it, it didn't come from getting older. I would rather say this quote. Um, wisdom doesn't necessarily come with age. Sometimes age shows up all by itself. You know, sometimes age is just a party of one, and it just shows up by itself. And so this morning, if you're like, oh, I'll grow out of this phase, I'll grow out of making dumb decisions, or I'll, I'll grow out of making decisions based on emotion, or I'll grow out of, of, of this season and this time of my life, when I get older, I'll start making better choices and becoming more wise. No, you won't, because wisdom doesn't necessarily come with age. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 11 says this, My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. See, he's saying, listen, 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 tune in, listen, don't miss it. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver and seek for them like hidden treasures. And when you do that, you will understand what it means to fear the Lord, to respect the Lord. And you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. Can I tell you, common sense isn't common anymore. Um, it, It just isn't. The Lord grants common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. He guards the path of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. And then you will understand what is right, just, and fair, and you will find the right way to go. Can I, this, these scriptures are so huge today. Man, if you're not writing down these scriptures, you need to. Oh, then you will understand what is right, just, and fair, and you will find the right way to go. If you're wondering what the right way to go is, man, start listening to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit, and to wisdom, and he will show you the right way to go. For wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will fill you with joy. And I love this. Wise choices will watch over you, and understanding will keep you safe. Wisdom leads to wise choices and understanding. But, but here's what I, I'm gonna use my stool. Here's what I want us to understand this morning. If, if we miss it, I'm running out of time. I know I could preach on this kind of stuff all day long and we've got communion right at the end. But here's what I want us to understand. A big paradigm shift that happens in our life when we start seeking after wisdom is that wisdom leads you to should instead of want. Wisdom leads you to should instead of want. If we can understand this moment, it it, it will change the trajectory of your entire life, your relationships, the relationships with your kids, your finances, man, the area of anger, the area of selfishness, all these different things, it will change the whole trajectory of your life if you can understand this point is that we want to operate on what I want to do, but that's not how wisdom operates. That's listening to the moment. That's listening to the passion of the moment. Well, I I want to do this, and we live in a culture that's all about do what you want, do what you want, do what you want, but that's not wisdom. Wisdom says this. Wisdom leads you into what should I do? Or or let's let's do it in a really bad vocabulary so we okie this up. What should I, what should I, what ought I do, <laughs> right? It was even hard for me to say out loud. What ought I do? <laughs> what, what should I do is a lot different than what I want to do because when you live your life based on what do I want to do, it will lead you in a place of hurt, of pain, of regret, and wanting to do things over And man, you get a mulligan in golf, but you don't get it in life. You get do-overs with me. You get do-overs in golf, (laughs) but not in life. And can I tell you, wisdom leads you in what and how you should live your life, how you should conduct yourself 
instead of how I want to conduct myself. And I, I got to tell you, if you're going to find wisdom, wisdom is only given to those who seek for it. All of us want to know, well, how do, how do I get wisdom? How do I become this wise person? You seek for it. And all of our texts in Proverbs, Proverbs 2, Proverbs 8, just read the book of Proverbs. It talks about seek for wisdom, seek for understanding. Though it costs all you have, get wisdom, get understanding. Seek for, for wisdom like silver. Seek for understanding like a hidden treasure. It talks about seeking. So how do we seek? According to James chapter 1, verse 9, we ask for it, we pray for it. James chapter 1, verse 5, excuse me. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Ask for wisdom. Let, let me give you a question to start asking. That one of the best questions to ask of the Lord, and it's simply this: what is the wise thing to do? What, what is the wise thing to do? Or you can even ask, what should I do? What's the not just doing it, but before you act. Before you decide, before you choose, before you choose to have that lunch meeting, before you choose to send that text and have that phone call and make that purchase and engage in that relationship, man, there's so many, what is the wise thing to do? What should I do? Because his promise is this, that wise choices will watch over you and keep you safe. What's the wise thing to do, God? If any of you lacks wisdom, ask God and he will give it. The second thing is this, is listen for it. Listen for it. If you're talking more than you're listening, there's a problem. There's a problem. Even when it comes to your time with the Lord, take time to listen, to listen to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what the Lord wants to speak to your life. I did a series on listening to the Holy Spirit and listening to the Word of God this past fall. Take time to listen. If you're going to get understanding, you don't get it while you're talking, you get it while you're listening. If you're going to get knowledge about a situation and a circumstance, you don't get it while you're talking, you get it while you're listening. Listen to the word of God. Listen to what the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. And the last way you get wisdom is you look for it. You seek for it. You, you humble yourself enough to know you don't know it all, but you're going to seek for it all. And that's a huge deal. You don't stop seeking for wisdom. You don't stop seeking for understanding just because your kids are out of the home, you're still a seeker of wisdom. I love this proverb. It may be my favorite one in all of Proverbs, um, but it says this in Proverbs 19, verse 20, get all the advice and instruction you can so you will be wise the rest of your life. If you want to be wise the rest of your life, it doesn't it's not about how you always start a race. Can I tell you, I'm much more worried about how we finish it. Amen. And if you're going to be wise the rest of your life, keep getting all the advice, keep giving, getting all the instruction, keep surrounding yourself with people who will speak truth in your life instead of flattery that you know are for you. Keep getting instruction and advice so that you can be wise. I want us to close with this scripture one more time out of Proverbs chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you and understanding will keep you safe. Seek for wisdom and let's eliminate the blind spots in our life. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. <clears throat> I thank you for today. And I thank you for your word that just speaks truth. Lord, there's so many of us here that we struggle. We have, every one of us has areas of blind spots, but the damage happens when we refuse to identify. 
those areas, those moments. And so, Lord, this morning, I pray that we would have the self-discipline, the self-reflection to identify the areas that are weaknesses, the areas that are our thorn in the flesh, as Paul said. Because, Lord, what we refuse to identify, we won't deal with, and we can't. And so, Lord, I pray that your word would penetrate our heart today. That we would understand this isn't a message about trying to keep us from fun. It's not a message about trying to keep uh, uh, us away from anything except from regret. Except from pain. Except from hurt. This morning, I, I ask that you'd help us to check out our blind spots this morning. That it would be a moment of reflection this morning as we leave this place and as we go home. We're driving to our house, our apartment. Lord Jesus, we would reflect on the blind spots of our life. And we would seek for your wisdom. So that wise choices would watch over us the rest of our days. It's in Jesus' name I pray. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here this morning, you say, Justin, I'm here. And I'm not where I'm supposed to be in my relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to give you a chance to change that. Maybe you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or the, just the, the raw reality, the truth is you're not where you need to be. And your relationship with him is anything but personal. And today you need to recommit your life. Today you need to come back home. I'm going to count to three, and if that's you, I'm just going to invite you to raise your hand, and we're going to lead you in a prayer that will change your life. Man, this, this, we're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to call you out. We're just simply inviting you to make a change, to pause long enough so that your Savior, Jesus Christ, can rescue you, can bring a change to you. I can't think of a better way to start your year off this morning. If that's you, when I count to three, just raise your hand. One two, three. Is there anyone here this morning you say, Justin, that's me. There's one hand. There's two hands. Is there anyone else you say, Justin, that's me. You just join these two hands that are lifted. Man, you may be at home watching online this morning. You say, Justin, that's me. I, I couldn't get there. I, 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 maybe you've got kids that are sick or maybe you just had anxiety about coming to church. But can I tell you, you don't have to be at church for Jesus to come to you. And this morning, if you're at home, man, I just invite you, raise your hand if that's you. Is there anyone else before we go any further? In this place, you say, Justin, that's me. If you raise your hand, if you please repeat this prayer after me and mean it from your heart. Jesus, I come before you today and I confess that I have sinned and that I've messed up, but I ask for your forgiveness. God, I ask that your grace and love would enter my life. I turn away from the life that I was living to grab hold of the life you have for me. I confess you, Jesus Christ, to be the Lord and Savior of my life. I'm going to live for you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Can we give these two individuals a raise their hand? A huge round of applause. Yeah. Hey, if you are helping us with communion and handing out the emblems, can you come and meet Greg Fisher? Um, and he will get you guys set up. But let me give some instruction. If you were two of the individuals that raised your hand, it doesn't stop here. It just started. Um, we believe growing equals changing and that everybody has a next step. Your next step is to get baptized in water. And so to go public with the change that just happened inside. And so we invite you to go to our Connect Center. Get signed up for baptism. Maybe you got baptized as a little kid, but it didn't have significance to it. We want to let that be a moment instead of just a, a thing that you did as a child, but that it be a cornerstone moment in your relationship with Jesus. Jesus Christ. We are so excited that you just made that decision and we want to help you 
on your journey with Jesus Christ. Let me give a few instructions real quick as we get ready to take communion. If you are in the center aisles and you're on the right side in the front, we're going to ask for you to come and get your cracker and your juice and go back to your seat. It is a gluten-free option um, for the wafer, and so you, everybody can partake in communion. But we're just going to ask you to wait to take the emblems until we do it corporately. If you are on the sides of the auditorium, after the center sections go, if you will come to the, the individual serving communion and get your emblems and go back to the seat, um, we will wait until everybody is served to take communion together, together corporately. I'm going to invite all of us to stand up across this place. Let's worship the Lord this morning as we get ready to take communion together.
It's not that he would sacrifice for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever would believe in him shouldn't perish but will have ever lasting life. That's what we celebrate right now. That's what we remember right now. And I can't think of anything to do better, a better way for us to start our new year off than this moment right now. It says this in Matthew chapter 26, 26, while they were eating, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. We take the bread, we take the wafer this morning, believing that God is still a healing God, meant that he's still capable of the miraculous. He's capable of doing the supernatural in your life, whether that's physical, whether that's emotional, whatever it may be, he's more than enough for you and more than enough for your situation. So this morning, I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna take the wafer together. Jesus, we come before you today and we just thank you for your promise. We thank you that you are our healer, that it's by your stripes we are healed. And Lord, no matter what that healing looks like, God, we know that you are capable and that you are all-knowing and all-powerful. And so, Lord, this morning, we just lay down. Some of us, we came in broken, and Lord, you were broken on our behalf that we didn't have to go through life broken. Lord, some of us come in bruised and beat up, but Lord, you are a God that is a healer. So, Lord, I pray that you would bring healing and restoration to our bodies physically, emotionally, and spiritually. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's take the wafer together. Verse 27 says, Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The blood that was shed on the cross, this is what it's all about. The forgiveness of sins. Man, you may have been, your your sins may have been scarlet, but he washes you white as snow. This morning, you can't undo what he did on the cross. Man, you can't be bad enough. You can't be guilty enough. You can't be horrible enough. His grace, his sacrifice is always, always, always more. More than enough for forgiveness. His forgiveness, man, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us from all our unrighteousness. All means all. So this morning, we take the cup we raise it up and we say thank you for your sacrifice thank you for your blood that made us new let's pray jesus we thank you for your blood we thank you for the sacrifice on a cross that made us new the lord as you talked about to to nicodemus about being born again lord this is the how this is how it's done It wasn't by what we did, it's by what you did on a cross on our behalf. And so, Lord, we come in and we say, thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for the shedding of blood on our behalf that makes us new and that makes all things new. So, Lord, this morning as we take the cup and we drink the juice, Lord, we don't forget the sacrifice. And we thank you for making us your sons daughters. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's take the cup together. Hey, this morning I want to say thank you for being here. What a great, great morning. Shannon's going to lead us in worship. Um, If you need to go get your children, we understand if you need to leave, uh, feel free. But if you want to stay here and worship it a little bit longer until they're done, we would love that. Man, be with us next week as we continue this series. Be a found person that finds people. Let's blow this place up.
let's fill it to overflowing, and we will see you all next Sunday. Have a wonderful rest of your day. There's no shadow.